Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next part of chapter 3. We're going to talk about time delays and the sort of delays that are introduced because we're executing particular instructions on the microcontroller from the perspective of branching, looping, etc. How do we create delays? How do we take advantage of our knowledge about the amount of time it takes for an instruction to work, to execute, in order to create delays? All right, so we begin with uh, a view of on the Atmega328, we typically have a clock attached to it, a crystal in this particular case. And here we're talking about connecting a 16 megahertz crystal to the microcontroller. Now the microcontroller, if it has a 16 megahertz clock, will have time slices or, or um, steps of time of 62.5 nanoseconds. Basically it's the inverse of 16 million. Now, when we execute uh, instructions on the machine itself, each um, instruction takes a fixed amount of time. Typically, we're talking about one clock cycle per instruction. So in this particular case, we have three load immediates and two adds. So we're loading, we're loading, we're loading, and then we add and we add. Each one of these takes one machine cycle, okay, one uh, iteration of a 62.5 nanosecond period. And so because we have five operations that each take one cycle, this ends up taking these five operations take 312.5 nanoseconds like this. So one uh, version or one iteration of 62.5 nanoseconds for LDI, one for LDI, one for LDI. So it's three times 62.5. Then we have an add, which is also 62.5 and another add, which is 62.5. So it's five times 62.5 nanoseconds, which is 312.5 nanoseconds. Okay, now it gets a little bit more interesting when we add in branching, because branching or the branch operations can sometimes take one instruction cycle and sometimes take two. So in this particular case, this little bit of a program that we're doing basically loads the value 100 into register R16 and then it loops um, using that label again, right there. It does an add, a decrement, and then it tests and creates a branch on that, th that fourth line right there. And if the branch works, then it goes back to the add operation at the again label, and it loops until such time as, because of those decrements, the value that's found in R16 goes all the way down to zero, at which point, instead of looping back to the again label, we go to the next line, which isn't shown right here. It goes to the next line in the program. All right. So basically we're loading into R16. We decrement each time we go through the loop from R16 until it gets to zero, at which point we stop looping and we just continue to the next line that's found after the branch. Now, when that happens, we are switching between either one uh, clock cycle or two clock cycles. If we're in the standard looping, then we have two clock cycles that are required. That's the branch penalty, okay? It takes two cycles in order to go back up to, again, when we're ready to exit the loop, that is the condition uh, in which the, the branching is no longer supposed to happen, then it only takes one clock cycle. Okay, that's when we hit uh, the contents of register 16 is equal to zero. Okay, and then it, it only gets one uh, increment of the uh, machine cycle. All right. So that is the loop right there. And what it means is because we are looping 100 times, we do one machine cycle for the first LDI, then the add R17, R16 is done 100 times, okay, or 100 cycles. The decrement as well is done 100 times, or it adds in uh, 100 clock cycles. The branch if not equal, that is done 100 times. However, it's only done 99 times at two clock cycles and once at one clock cycle. All right, let's take a look at a different example right now. Now, this is the loop right here. We're going to be branching, if not equal, that's at the very end, back to the again label. And what we do is we load in a value of 3 into R16 initially. That's outside of the loop. We're going to put that increment value or the number of loops to be three. So we go into the loop, which is in pink right there. 
So we've done one cycle for loading. Next, we're going to do the NOP, which is one cycle, the NOP, which is one cycle, the decrement, which is one cycle. Then we do the branch, if not equal. And we're going to do that the first time. We branch back because the decrement hasn't brought R16 down to zero yet. So that's done once. Okay, so that adds a two penalty. Then NOP, one, NOP, one, decrement, one, branch, if not equal, that's two cycles right there. Okay. Now the contents of R16 is going to be 1. So we're now ready to go back up to the loop. So we go to the top of the loop again. We're going to do NOP1, NOP1, decrement again. Now R16 is going to be 0. We do the branch. Okay, this is the third iteration through the loop. We do the branch if not equal. We test to see if uh, R16 has resulted in, in a contents of 0. That is true in this particular case. So in this case, we have a... Uh, there's no branch penalty. We take one cycle and we move through. Okay, so so basically, in order to know the number of counts that we have uh, in terms of clock cycles, we have to know when that branch, if not equal, engages. So basically, what we're seeing here is we do the initialization that takes one clock cycle. Then it takes three clock cycles for the first knot, three clock cycles for the second knot, uh, three clock cycles for the decrement. Then we have two times two clock cycles for the branch of not equal and one uh, one clock cycle for the branch. Okay, so that in total, um, it takes one plus three, that's four, plus three, that's seven, plus three, that's ten, plus uh, 14, plus 15. Okay. That's the number of clock cycles that would take. And of course, we then have to add in the load immediate at the very beginning. Okay, um, so so that's that's what's important to point out here. All right, now let's look at something a little bit more complicated. What we have here are two loops. We have an inner loop and an outer loop. The outer loop is going to be done 20 times. And then for every time that we do the outer loop, we are going to do the inner loop 50 times. Okay. And this means that we have two branch uh, or not e uh, branch if not equal, um, one in order to get that first inner loop to work, and once in order to do the outer loop right there. And each of them will have a particular set of branch penalties that go along with it. So it gets a little bit more complicated here as well. So the initial setup right here takes one cycle. The second setup is done 20 times, so that takes 20. Uh, clock cycles. The inner loop, that's even more complicated. Um, it's the first knob is done 20 times times 50. So it's actually a thousand times that it's done. The knob here is also done a thousand times. That decrement is done a thousand times. The branch, if not equal here on that inner loop, is also done a thousand times. However, it's uh, on, on each of the, well, not that 20 right there, but on the 50 right here, 49 times uh, it's done at two cycles and once it's done at one cycle and that's repeated 20 different times. Then we have the decrement right here and then we have that other branch if not equals right here and this is done 20 times because the, the initial LDI right here is 20 and that 20 is done 19 times at two cycles and once at one cycle. So this can be a little confusing, it can be a little complicated However, because we know uh, definitively that uh, the, the individual operations occur for either one or two, or sometimes one and then two um, clock cycles, we can actually calculate it in sort of a hard number ahead of time how much time these loops take in order to create hard-coded delays. Mm -hmm.